What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Aaron and today we're gonna to talk about how to trade options. And in this video, we're gonna go over absolutely everything that you need to know. So if you don't know anything about options, by the end of this video, you'll know pretty much all you need to know to make your first trade and start making some progress on your options trading journey. So this video is gonna be broken down into six major categories. First, we're gonna talk about the option contract fundamentals. Then we're gonna go into the Greeks of option contracts. Then after that, we're gonna go into the options chain. I'm gonna show you exactly how to use that, how to read the options chain. Then after that, we're gonna go into long options and short options PL. And then at the end, I'm gonna go over a bunch of different trading strategies uh, that you can implement in your options trading portfolio. So I actually started investing and trading all the way back in high school, but I really didn't start investing or trading options for about five years after that. And since then, I actually worked in a hedge fund as an execution trader. And one of the main products that I traded for the portfolio managers was options, either long options or spreads. And we sold some puts, but mainly on the long side of things. So right now I actually I have a pretty good breadth of options and I've also traded in my portfolio uh, tons of options um, from the short side and the long side. That's basically all I did for a few years in one of my portfolios. So now I'm going to try to pass it on to you and get you up to speed on options trading. All right now let's dive in. All right so let's start it off by going over some options contract fundamentals. This I'll be honest is not the most interesting part of the video but it's going to be quick and you really need to know this stuff before we move on to the strategies, how to read options chains, and some of the more interesting things. So the first point that we need to go over is that each option contract is worth 100 shares of the underlying. The underlying is the stock. So Apple, for example, Apple will be the underlying and then you're buying options on Apple. Um, and each option that you own is worth 100 shares always. And this is very important to keep in mind because that's where the leverage comes into play. So the second factor that we need to go over is that call options give the buyer the right but not the obligation to buy the stock at a predetermined price. The strike price is the predetermined price. The call option profits when the price of the underlying moves above the strike price. So when the price of the underlying advances goes up in price, that's going to be when your call option is profitable. So then for put options, a put gives the owner of the put the right but not the obligation to sell the stock at a predetermined price, the strike price. The put option contract profits when the price of the underlying moves below the strike price of the call. So this is basically offering the owner of the put protection so they can sell their shares um, at a predetermined price that they determine when they buy the put. So if you buy the 200 put on the SPY, for example, that means you'll be able to sell your shares at $200. No matter if the price moves below that, you'll still be able to sell your shares at that $200 price point. So the next point that we need to, go, need to go over is leverage. And this is like what I mentioned before, that each option contract is worth 100 shares of the underlying. So that's where leverage comes into play. And this is a really good way that um, you'll be able to leverage your portfolio if you want to but this has some risks and rewards but the, you definitely need to know that each option contract is worth 100 shares and that's always across every single option contract across every single underlying it's always going to be 100 shares of the underlying so the next point that we need to go over is the difference between a credit and a debit basically so if you're going to buy an option you're going to be paying a debit you're going to be paying money to buy that option just like buying anything else money's leaving your pocket and if you're going to be selling the option, then you're going to be collecting premium, just like if you're selling anything else. Someone is going to be paying you money. And in this case, that's going to be premium. Premium is what exchanges hands. When you're buying the option, you're going to be paying premium. And when you're selling an option, you're going to be collecting premium. So the next point that we need to go over is that premium is the combination of intrinsic and extrinsic value. And those intrinsic and extrinsic value are the two things that make up the price of an option. So intrinsic value is the amount of value that is derived from the option being in the money. If you have a $10 call and the stock is at $20, then your call is $10 in the money and it is $10 of intrinsic value. And this will be more apparent and easier to understand when we look at the options chain. 
because then you'll really you'll really understand what in the money and out of the money actually means. So extr extrinsic value by definition then would be the amount of options value that is derived from the time left till expiration and the applied volatility. So the price of the 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 price of the option, the premium, is the combination of both intrinsic and extrinsic value. And that means for intrinsic value, that's the price of the option that's derived from it actually being in the money, that's a real value. And then the ex extrinsic value, that's the amount of value that's made up of both um, time, time left on the option, and implied volatility. So those are the factors that make up the price of an option. So these are all kind of the fundamental things that we need to know about, that you need to know about before trading options. And these are pretty simple things at face value. They might take a little bit of time uh, just reading over them and then digesting what it actually means. But once you start trading, maybe in a simulator, you'll grasp these concepts extremely quickly. So part two, now we need to go over the Greeks. So the Greeks are basically some metrics that tell us how the price of the option changes based on various different factors. So the first one is theta or time decay. So theta is basically the amount of, of value that an option loses as time passes. And I wanna show you a graph that, sh that should make this a little bit easier to understand. So here we have days till expiration. Remember, options have expiration dates. They, they don't last forever. You buy an option for a specific expiration date. So as time passes, that option is gonna lose value. Because if we just think about it, if something is expiring, then you have, if you have more time on the, whatever that is, say if you buy um, a coupon to get you $2 off for a hamburger and there's three months left on it, that might be worth more than that same coupon that maybe has an hour left on it because you have more time to actually use it. So theta is basically telling us how much value is actually being lost out of that option as time goes by. And if we look at this graph right here, we see days to expiration where expiration is at zero. And at 90, we have basically 100% of the extrinsic value. Remember, theta is part of what makes up the extrinsic value. Then as time goes on, that is going to gonna come down. We're gonna lose value as time goes on. And here's another interesting graph. It's, it's kind of small, but it'll still show you a good, a good idea of this. So the at the money option right here, you remember, because when options are at the money or in the money, more of that option's value is made up of intrinsic value. So the, the theta effect of that is actually going to be less. Right here, if we, we see the in the money right here, we can see how much less of that value is actually made up of theta, but the at the money, or this will be out of the money, more of, the va more of that option's value is actually made up of theta. But it shows us the same thing. As time goes on along the bottom right here, the value of that option is going to decay. And once we get closer to expiration, say around 35 to 45 days, that value of the option is gonna start coming down much faster. So that's another very interesting thing that we need to know about options. And we can see on this graph as well, once we get to 35 days, you can see the rate of decline in that option's value, in that option's theta, increases. So. We're, we're losing value at an increasing rate once we get to 35 days. So that's the first one, theta. So the next one is delta, and delta is telling us how much an option's value changes in relation to a one point move in the underlying. And we're gonna go over this more in um, when we look at the options chain, but this one is very critical to know as well, because this is gonna be how we actually pick a lot of our options based on the percent of going in the money, and that's what delta is gonna show us, and also how much that option is gonna move, how much the price of the option is gonna move based on a one point um, change in the underlying. So if the underlying moves up by $1 and we have an option that is at a 50 delta, that option is gonna move by basically 50% of the, the change in price of the underlying. So the next one is Vega, and Vega tells us how much our options will move based on a one point move in implied volatility. So if implied volatility goes up by 1%, then we'll expect our price of the option to go up by some percentage as well. So the last Greek that we need to know is gamma, and gamma is actually telling us how much an option's delta is moving based on a one point move in the delta's price. So this is basically a derivative on delta, telling us how much it moves based on the price of the move in delta. 
and this will be at its maximum value when an option is at the money and also this changes as we get closer to expiration so gamma is increasing as we get closer to expiration because that volatility is is changing and delta is changing very rapidly as well and gamma is telling us that so that is those are the greeks now let's dive into the options chain. I think this is gonna help it come, come together and make a lot more sense because now we're gonna have some visual aids and it's gonna help out. So now let's look at an options chain. So this is a chain for the SPY and right off the bat, we're looking at different expiration dates. So we can see Feb 8, 2021, all the way down to December 15th, 2023. And this is for ticker SPY. So all of these expiration dates are just for SPY. So let's go into, and we can see the W right here. This is for weekly expirations, and then the regular expirations are the monthlies. So these will be on the third week of every month. And we can see those right here, February 19th, March 19th, so on, so on. And we can see days till expiration right here, 13 days till this options chain expires. So let's just go into this regular expiration date. And now things, this can get a little bit overwhelming. I remember when I started trading options and trying to grasp what was going on, this is when I would get a little bit confused trying to figure out the options chain, but it's actually pretty simple. So right down the middle, we have the strike prices. On the left side, we'll always have the calls. Right here, you can see calls. And on the right side, we'll always have puts and the strike price is in the middle because it relates to both the call and the put. Then we can see the bid and the ask. Now, if you're going to be buying either a call or a put, you're going to click on the ask for whatever strike price. So let's say we wanna buy the 387 call expiring Feb 19, 2021. We'll click on the ask right here for $4.80. That means that to buy the 387 call, we're gonna be paying, remember a debit, we're gonna be paying $4.80. But now let's say we want to sell the 387 call, we're just gonna click on the bid and the bid is at $4.76. So we're gonna be actually collecting, remember credit, because we're selling the 387 call, we're gonna be collecting $4.76. Now, that's, this is exactly the same for any, any of these strikes, either on the call side or the put side. So as another example for puts, let's say we wanna buy this 378 put, we're just gonna go over, remember, to the right side now and click on the ask for this 378 put, and that's at $1.68. We're gonna be paying $1.68 as a debit to buy this 378 put. Then again, if we wanna sell it, we wanna sell the put, then we can just click on the 378 bid um, for $1.66, and we're gonna be selling that for $1.66 and collecting that money. So that at face value, like that's it. That's the options chain, it's, it's extremely simple. Then we can also see in the money and in the money from on both the call side and the put side. And we need to we need to recognize what in the money and out of the money at the money is. So when you're at the money, th that means that's the strike that's closest to where the underlying is. So we can see that the underlying right now, last price is at 387.71. So the closest strike is the 388 strike because that's, that's the closest one to the underlying price. This is the at the money strike. Now for calls, remember call is, uh, profits when the price of the underlying is above your strike price. So that means that all of these calls right here are the in the money calls because uh, we can see that every single one of these calls is, is below the price of the underlying. Because remember, a call gives the owner of that call the right to buy that, the, their shares at a predetermined price. So just like think about this logically. If we buy the 380 call, right, that means we, we have the right to buy our shares at 3, 380. But the price of the underlying is actually at 387. So that's where our intrinsic value is. That difference between the 380 strike and where the price is actually trading at 
387 where that underlying is actually trading that's where our intrinsic value actually is we have seven dollars and 71 cents of intrinsic value it's the difference between our 380 call that we have and the the value the uh, price the underlying at 387 where it is right now now on the put side remember it's the opposite because a put gives the owner of that put the right to sell their shares at a predetermined price so let's say we own the 390 puts and the stock is trading at 387, that means that we can sell our shares at 390. Now that difference between 390 and 387, that's our intrinsic value. Because remember, as a holder of shares, we always wanna sell them for the highest price possible. So by buying a put, we're actually gonna be ensuring that we'll be able to sell our shares at three dollars at 390 when the price of the underlying is actually at 387. so that difference between 390 if we buy the 390 put and the price of the underlying where it is right now at 387 that's our intrinsic value and that's why puts profit when the price of the underlying goes down and calls profit when the price of the underlying goes up now everything on the other side for both calls and puts is going to be considered out of the money now any out of the money strike price for puts is going to be any put that's below the price of the underlying and for calls it's going to be any strike that's above the price of the underlying so those are gonna be, that's the main things about the options chain that we need to know about. Remember, this is the same for any expiration. So if we wanna go out further in time, we can even go out all the way to December 15th of 2023. Let's click on that options chain. We can see it looks exactly the same. It's the exact same information, the same strikes. The only thing that changes is the price. We can see these, these are significantly more expensive, 55, 50 for to buy the uh, 385 calls where if we look back to Feb 19th to buy the 387 calls it was four dollars and eighty cents so why is it so much more expensive it's because we're paying for time we were paying for years worth of time and that's where theta comes into play you can see as we get closer to expiration you have less time in your option contract so it's significantly less expensive so that's where theta comes into play and you can see that when you go out further in time so now let's look at delta really quickly this column right here and here i have open interest and you can change this to really anything you want now let's look at something very interesting so at the money is going to be basically always a 50 delta then if we go for and we're looking at calls right now if we go in the money we can see that delta is going to be increasing the further we go in the money so basically that's what what that's saying is the further we go in the money the more that that option is going to react like the stock and that makes perfect sense because you have more intrinsic value in that option it's going to be much closer to a one one relationship with the actual change in the underlying price so this is also and if we look out of the money right here now we're looking out of the money we're seeing delta decrease because now that option is further away from being in the money it is less intrinsic value it's mainly made up of extrinsic value made up ex and remember extrinsic value is um, made up of theta made up of time and made up of volatility so if we move further away from uh, in the money, that delta is gonna be decreasing. Now, another thing that we can use delta for is as a percent chance of going in the money. So you can think of this as a 51 delta, that's a 51% chance of that option going in the money. Now, if we move out to say the 31 delta, you can think of that as a 31% chance of that option going in the money. So this is really how I choose to pick a lot of my options, say if I'm selling puts, what I'll do is I'll just go right to the 30 delta right here and say, okay, the 382 delta has basically a 30% chance of going in the money. Now, if I'm selling the option, I don't really want it to go in the money. So that 30% chance is actually what I'm looking for. So one more thing about the options chain that I wanna make extremely clear, and this was actually something that kind of confused me at the beginning as well, was that the price of the strike never changes. Remember that the price of the strike will never change. What changes is the actual bid and the ask. So when the markets are open, you'll see these bid and asks moving all the time because that's, that's actually the premium that you're either paying or collecting. The strike never changes. You're always gonna be either, you're always gonna be trading premium. 
The strike doesn't change. I cannot emphasize, emphasize that enough because that I think really confuses a lot of people where they see both a strike, then they also see a bid and an ask. There's like three different prices that can confuse you. Strike doesn't change. What you need to be paying attention to is the bid and the ask. Now let's go over long options P&L, basically how their P&L works. So to do this, let's just buy a mock, uh, a mock call. Let's go to the, the 390 call, let's click the ask. So now let's look at the payoff diagram. Remember we bought the 390 calls, so right here, the 390. And remember when you're buying an option, the maximum amount that you can lose, your max loss is the premium that you paid. So our max loss for this is our $3.10. But remember, each option is worth 100 shares. So we need to multiply $3.10 by 100. So our total value of that option is $310. Now, if we move along this, the, um, the payoff diagram right here, you can see if the underlying keeps declining in price, that will never lose more than 310. That's one of the great things about buying options is that your loss is always capped to the premium that you're actually paying. On the other side, when um, when the price of the underlying moves above our strike price, remember we have the 390 calls in this instance, let's say the price of the underlying goes all the way up to 400. Now you can see that we've actually made about $753 at expiration and it can just keep going up from there. There's no cap to this. So the maximum amount you can lose when you're buying an option is the premium that you paid. In this instance, the $3.10, multiply that by 100, $310. And it can go, the price of the underlying line can go all the way to zero, and you're never gonna lose more than the premium that you paid, but you have unlimited upside, but it has to be within your expiration date. So now let's say we're gonna sell the 390 call instead. Let's go back to the curve. And now we can see our payoff diagram looks exactly opposite, because it is. So now since we're selling the call, we have a, ca we have a capped maximum profit, um, we ha because it's the premium that we collected. That means that the maximum amount that we can make for this position is the premium we collected. Because our, our best case scenario is that the price of this option decays all the way back to zero and we can basically let it expire worthless or buy it back for a very little amount of premium. And remember, we're selling it to the call buyer. So the call buyer has the option for unlimited profitability, but we have the option for limited profitability, but a much higher probability of profit. That's the trade-off there. You can think of this almost as like an insurance company. Um, if you're selling options, you're the insurer, right? You're selling the option, um, the car insurance to someone. There's a very small chance that someone actually will get in a car, car incident and you're gonna be collecting premium every single month. But on the off chance that someone actually does get in a car accident, you'll have to lay out a large amount of money. That's kind of like what selling options is. It's actually almost exactly like what selling options is. So we can see here we have $3.08. And if we look at the payoff diagram, again, the maximum amount we can make is the $3.08, but the maximum amount that we can lose is actually unlimited. So you need to be aware of that, that there's actually unlimited losses. Okay, so part six, the last part, let's go over some options trading strategies. So the first one that we need to go over is just naked options. This is basically either buying or selling an option without a spread. So without the other side of it, either capping your losses or protecting you basically. So the first one that we can go over, it's just buying, buying a call outright. And this is what we kind of did already. I'll keep this very short, but to buy basically a naked call, you're just gonna click on the ask, and that's basically a naked call by position. You have unlimited profitability, and you have limited losses for just the premium that you paid. But where I see the best, op the best use for naked call buying is actually something called a leap. And a leap is an option that's basically out further than six months in time. So we can go all the way out to say March 2022, and this will be technically like a leap now. And this will basically give you a leveraged long position. So what I would do and what I've done in the past to basically get exposure to the market is go, go into a, an option in the SPY maybe a year out. And let's go, I like, to, for, if I'm doing a leap for just the SPY, we'll go to something either like the 60, around the 60 to the 80 delta. So let's just go to the 60 delta and we can click on the 375 
call for $42. And the reason to do this is because it's a much more just efficient way to get long in the market. Remember, I'm only paying about $4,209, but the notional value of that option contract is actually about $37,500, because remember, you're just taking the strike and multiplying it by 100. So it's a very efficient way to get long the market. Then you can use that capital for something else. So that's basically what a long call is, and for a long put, it'll be the exact same thing. For a naked put, it's the exact same thing. And go into March 19th, we can just buy the uh, 379 put, for example, and that will give us protection for anything below 379. The next strategy is a covered call. So what a covered call is, is a position where you have 100 shares of stock, and this is the actual stock that you own, 100 shares, not an option, and you sell a call basically above out of the money, and this is basically going to be reducing your downside risk, and you're gonna be collecting premium. So let's look at how to do this. Let's say we're gonna buy 100 shares, and then let's go out of the money, and let's actually sell the 395 call. So now you can see down here, we have 100 shares that we're buying, and we're gonna be selling the out of the money 395 call. Remember, the price of the underlying is at 387, 395 is out of the money, so we're gonna be collecting $5.38. The idea of this is to reduce your downside risk, um, because you basically, since you're collecting $5.38, you have $5.38 of downside protection. And if we look at this green bar, you can see that we have protection all the way down to 383, because remember, price of the underlying is at 387 right now so mine is five dollars and we're at 383 so that's what a covered call will do and you can do this for absolutely anything so say you have 100 shares in apple for example and you're worried about whatever like earnings or some event you can sell an out of the money call collect that premium and then that premium is going to give you that downside protection and a lot of people basically just do this every single month to basically constantly be collecting premium. And it's actually a very um, smart way to, to collect more money and earn more passive income basically off your one investment. So the next strategy is a debit or credit spread. So a debit spread means that we're basically going to be buying spread and a credit spread, remember, means that we're going to be selling the spread. So now to put on a credit spread, let's do the same thing, but now we're gonna sell the 390 call. We're gonna sell the closer to the money call and we're gonna buy the 395 call. Now you can see that we're actually going to be collecting $2.55. And this means again that the spread can only be worth $5 and we want it to decay all the way down to zero. So our maximum loss can only be um, $2.45 because the spread can only go to full, full value. The spread can only go to $5 and it can only decay down to zero. So since we're collecting $2.55, that can only, we can only make $2.55 on that. We can only make what we're collecting for a credit spread, and we can only lose what the maximum spread is worth, which is $5, minus the amount that you collected, $2.55. Your maximum loss will be $2.45. All right, so the next strategy is going to be selling a strangle. And this is a very common, a very popular strategy, basically a neutral direction strategy where, the, where you want the price of the underlying to basically stay within your two strikes. So what you're going to be doing is selling both a call and a put. So what I like to do for these is go to the 15 delta. So where is that? Right here. 15, well, 16 delta, close enough. And remember, we're gonna be collecting $1.45 for this. Then let's go on the put side, let's go all the way to the 15 delta, and let's sell that one, $2.93. So the total for this, we're gonna be collecting is $4.45, which is just what we're collecting on the put side, and what we're collecting on the call side. Now, you can see that this green line right here, we're profitable here. Let's actually look to the curve. So right here, we can see that we're profitable, this green area, if the price of the underlying stays within our two break-even points, basically. So since we have the 355 put on the downside, that's gonna be where our stock needs to stay um, above. And on the call side, we have the 3, 
um, we have the 408 call. So that's where we need to have our stock stay below. What we want to happen is just for time to pass and for volatility to come down. And that's how we actually profit on this. This is a neutral direction strategy. All we want to happen is for nothing to happen really. Time to go by for the, the spread for these options to decay in value. Then once these options decay in value, then we're gonna actually buy them back for a lower price. So if we sold them for $4.41, we collected $4.41, we'll wanna buy them back for maybe $2. And that difference is what we're, what we're profiting off of. But the only downside of this is that you do have a maximum loss on either side. Remember, we can lose on both the call side and the put side. But since we're selling these really far out of the money, there's about a 70% chance of profitability with this strategy. So this is a great one to go to. I use the strangles all the, all the time. Now the next one is a straddle. This is another neutral direction strategy, but this one is pretty simple. All we're gonna be doing is selling both a call and a put at the same strike. You can see we sold the 388 call right here for $9.10 and we're selling the 388 put right here for $9.68 and we're collecting a huge amount of premium, basically $8.84 and if we look at the curve, this is what it looks like. Now since we're collecting $18.84, that means that it's just gonna push our break evens out $18.84 on both the call side and the put side and if we look at the graph, right here, it'll make more sense. So if we look right here, we're at the 388, because that's what we sold, the 388 calls and the 388 puts. If we go up all the way to, what is it, 407, that's basically where our break even is and everything above that is when we're gonna start to lose money. And on the put side, if we go all the way down to 370, that's gonna be where we start to lose money as well. And we want the price of the underlying to stay within our two break evens. And we want just time to go by. We want theta to take its effect, the, the price of these options to decay in value and for volatility to come down. And then we'll buy these back at a later date um, when it's close to expiration and these options are much less expensive. Now the last strategy that I want to show you is an iron condor. And this is basically a strangle with um, capped losses. So you can think of this as basically just two spreads on either side. Remember we already went over what a credit and a debit spread is. This is gonna be two credit spreads. So to put this on, let's make two $5 spreads and you'll see how this comes together. So right here, we're gonna to go to the 30 delta, we're gonna sell the 400 call, and we're gonna sell the 405 call. So that's our first spread. So now we're gonna go over to the put side and do the exact same thing. At the 30 delta, we're gonna sell the 374 put for $5.64, and we're gonna buy the 369 put for $4.77. So that is what our iron condor is. You can see we just have a spread on the put side, a $5 spread on the put side, and a $5 spread on the call side, both at 30 delta. So now let's look at the payoff diagram. And this is another neutral strategy, remember, but it has capped profitability and capped losses, which is actually great for smaller accounts. So on the, on the uh, profitability side, remember, we can only profit what we collected total for these for the iron condor. So the $2.31. Now you can see if the price of the stock stays between our short options at 400 on the call side and 374 on the put side, that's where we make maximum profitability. If we go below 369 on the put side, that's when we start to incur losses. And if we go above 405 on the call side, that's when we start to incur losses as well. But remember, with, with an iron condor, you have a fixed maximum loss because it's, only, remember, it's just two, two spreads, basically. So you can only lose $269 in this instance because remember, we put on a $5 spread. So you, that spread can only be worth $5 and we collected $2.31. So $2.31 plus the remainder of that, which would be which would be the $269 or $2.69, will get us to $5, and that's your maximum loss on both sides. So that's another great 
a great neutral strategy that you can put on and it's a lot better for smaller accounts, better for learning because you have those fixed maximum losses. All right guys, so that's basically how to trade options. That's everything you need to know at a very surface level. I can really understand how this might be overwhelming, but if there's one piece of advice that I could give you, definitely set up a simulated account and start trading options on that simulated account. I guarantee you this will all make sense very quickly once you actually start putting on trades and start seeing how prices move, how the option is moving, it's gonna make a lot more sense. Now, I highly recommend Webull. There's a link in the description where you can actually get two free stocks if you sign up and deposit $100 into your account. They actually have a great paper trading feature where you can practice trading options on your Webull app as well. That's definitely the way that I recommend to do it. Set up that simulated trading account, start trading some options with everything you just learned right now, and then you can move on to live money once you feel ready, once you actually grasp it, have a good grasp on it. And that's exactly what I did. I used this simulator for about three months before I used live money. I hope you guys got something out of this. I hope you learned how to trade options. You're gonna do great. You're gonna trade these options pretty soon. My name's Aaron, guys. I hope you liked the video. Remember to like and subscribe. See you in the next video. Peace.